The circus arrives without warning. No announcements precede it. No paper notices on downtown posts and billboards. No mentions or advertisements in local newspapers. It is simply there, when yesterday it was not. The towering tents are striped in white and black. No golds and crimsons to be seen. No colour at all, save for the neighbouring trees and the grass of the surrounding fields. Black and white stripes on grey sky. Countless tents of varying shapes and sizes, with an elaborate wrought iron fence encasing them in a colourless world. Even what little ground is visible from outside is black or white, painted or powdered, or treated with some other circus trick. But it is not open for business, not just yet. Within hours, everyone in town has heard about it. By afternoon, the news has spread several towns over. Word of mouth is a more effective method of advertisement than typeset words and exclamation points on paper pamphlets or posters. It is impressive and unusual news, the sudden appearance of a mysterious circus. People marvel at the staggering height of the smallest tents. They stare at the clock that sits just outside the gates that no one can properly describe. And the black sign painted in white letters that hangs upon the gates, the one that reads, opens at nightfall, closes at dawn. What kind of circus is only open at night, people ask. No one has a proper answer. Yet, as dusk approaches, there is a substantial crowd of spectators gathering outside the gates. You are amongst them, of course. Your curiosity got the best of you, as curiosity is wont to do. You stand in the fading light, the scarf around your neck pulled up against the chilly evening breeze, waiting to see for yourself exactly what kind of circus only opens once the sun sets. The ticket booth is clearly visible behind the gates is closed and barred. The tents to still, safe when they ripple ever so slightly in the wind. The only movement within the circus is the clock that ticks by the passing minutes, if such a wonder of sculpture can ever be called a clock. The circus looks abandoned and empty, but you think perhaps you can smell caramel wafting through the evening breeze beneath the crisp scent of the autumn leaves, a subtle sweetness at the edges of the cold. The sun disappears completely beyond the horizon and the remaining luminosity shifts from dusk to twilight. The people around you are growing restless from waiting, a sea of shuffling feet murmuring about abandoning the endeavour in search of some place warmer to pass the evening. You yourself are debating departing when it happens. First, there is a popping sound. It is barely audible over the wind in conversation, a soft noise like a kettle about to boil for tea. Then comes the light. All over the tent, small lights begin to flicker, as through the entirety of the circus is covered in particularly bright fireflies. The waiting crowd quiets as it watches this display of illumination. Someone near you gasps. A small child claps his hands of glee at the sight. When the tents are all aglow, sparkling against the night sky, the sign appears. Stretched across the top of the gates, hidden in the curls of iron, more firefly-like lights flicker to life. They pop as they brighten, some accompanied by a showering of glowing white sparks and a bit of smoke. The people nearest to the gates take a few steps back. At first, it is only a random pattern of lights. But as more of them ignite, it becomes clear that they are aligned in scripted letters. First, a C is distinguishable, followed by more letters. A Q, oddly, and several E's. When the final bulb pops a light and the smoke and sparks dissipate, it is finally legible, this elaborate, incandescent sign. Leaning to your left to gain a better view, you can see that it reads, Le Cirque de Reves. Some in the crowd smile knowingly, while others frown and look questioningly at their neighbours. A child near you tugs on a mother's sleeve, begging to know what it says. The Circus of Dreams comes a reply. The girl smiles delightedly. Then the iron gates shudder and unlock, seemingly by their own volition. They swing outward, inviting the crowd inside. Now the circus is open. Now you may enter.